Hi. Uh, I think it's okay, and I think it's actually really, really important that we sleep with our babies, that we sleep with our children. I really don't want this to be misconstrued along the lines of like, oh, you know, you're too inappropriately close to the child and uh, people bring in ideas of like, you know, pedophilia. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about sleeping at night, closeness, hugs and cuddles, no contact, no skin. No contact with erogenous zones. No sexual stimulation. Okay? What I mean is close contact at night sleeping with your babies and your children. If you look at uh, the ape families, the chimpanzees, the gorillas, the orangutans, the vervet monkeys, the, the, the gray ones... Um, baboons, all of them, and even the other animals, so many other mammals out there. Their babies are not in another tree or another rock crevice. Their babies are with them, close, like next to the heart, for as long as that baby needs it, for as long as that baby is feeling like they need the closest, they need the security. The baby starts to, uh, after a while, the, the child or the baby at a certain age starts to venture out on their own and the parent gives them more and more independence. But while the child needs it, while the baby needs it, they're as close to that parent as is physically possible. And again, I'll reiterate, it's nothing about uh, sexual stimulation, it's nothing about sexual contact. No erogenous zones are being stimulated. It's just closeness. I really hope people will not read into this the wrong way. If you put it in perspective, us humans, if you look at the way we are, we are social animals and we do become easily lonely a whole bunch of us are going through a, a period of uh, pretty intense depression at the moment, right? And if you look at our society, it, it seems to be worked out that it, it's not easy. It's not easy to live in informal groups. It's not easy to maintain the old structure of the family nucleus or the nuclear family, especially when... A father has, or one parent has to work on one side of town and the other one works on the other. And sometimes they very, very rarely get to see each other. Or maybe the child is shuttled between other people in the meantime, like grandparents or daycare. Our society doesn't help us, or it really, it, it's largely privately taken care of. It's not an intrinsic thing in our society. And so it's easy. If you just let the things happen on their own, it's easy to fall in to a, a pattern and circumstances where you're quite far away from your loved ones, you're quite far away from your family. But if you look in the animal world, the mammals and every, it, the family groups are really close and the babies are the closest for as long as possible before they grow up with their parents. And us humans, when we're growing up, once we're adults, a big part, a large portion of our time and our focus and our thinking thoughts and our daydreaming is towards and about looking for a mate. Not even really looking for a mate, but looking for someone we can share our nighttime hours with. And it's, it's not necessarily sexual. It's not sexual. We just want somebody to sleep with. We want somebody next to us at night, the nighttime hours which feel a little like a fair bit quieter and 
different thoughts come through at night, different feelings come through at night, and often it's easier to feel lonely at night, and probably it's um, even down to a base survival instinct for a sense of security, like you've got other people there, or you've got another person there to be with you, to see things, to share space, to be close with, and it's not sexual, it's not sexual. So as adults, we're constantly looking for somebody to share this with us. We're, we're always on the search for somebody to share this with us, whether we consciously think of it or not. It's something so many of us are always doing. And what on earth are we expecting? A brand new, a brand new human newborn baby to be okay with after being nine months very, very close inside the mother. It's out, and then this baby is put in a different room of the house, in their own little little cot or carriage, bed, while the mom and dad or the parents are in a different room in the house, sleeping next to each other for their comfort. What are we doing? Why do we do this? I, I feel it's... I feel on a very, very deep instinctual base level, we're doing something wrong here. We're doing our babies an enormous disservice. They need to be close to you. They need to be with you. They need to feel you there. That, I mean, I've slept with my kid. I've slept with my little daughter from birth until probably, she's 11 now. So probably about one and a half years ago. And she... She has always had her own room, but I've always given her the option to sleep with me. And only, hi, only up until about a year and a half ago, was she saying, okay, mom, I'm going to go sleep in my own room now. And now she's so independent. She often doesn't need me for a good part of the day. So by me having her with me, I have actually built up her independence. I have given her so much of myself, my presence, my touch, my, my, my hugs, my cuddles, that I have built her up. And now she's so strong and secure and independent, she doesn't even need me anymore. Not, not for much. Not really. I mean, she still comes for hugs and cuddles, but a lot of, we spend a lot of, I mean, she, she, she's her own ship. She's sailing her own ship, man. She's, she's navigating already. She's navigating life already. We're living in the same house, but she is so independent. And she's one of the most independent kids. If I look, at, look around me, so this whole thing where, oh, you need to keep your baby in a different room so that they become uh, independent. No, you are increasing trauma and loneliness and hopelessness and detachment. They're going to grow up with a feeling that no one's coming. No one's coming to help you. You're either in pain or you're feeling sad or you're distraught or something's bugging you. No one's coming. You're on your own. Deal with it. For a baby. That's when they need us most. It's especially with, this, with this, um, this, this way of thinking that you have to let them cry it out, which is a load of bollocks, a load of absolute rubbish. Let, let them in the room. Uh, keep them in the room there. Close the door. If they're crying, just let them cry it out. The worst thing you could do. That is the worst thing we could do possibly ever do we are going down as a human species if that's what we're doing no animal parent out there no mammal animal parent out there is ever gonna let hear their baby crying in a different area and just let them do it never they will find that baby they will cry and scream until they get that baby and they will hold them close and they will make that that child calm down They'll calm them down and they'll, they'll look after them until they're happy and secure. Animals don't do this to their babies. Why on earth do we? I feel like 
it, it, it's, a, it's a weird mentality that see, it's a very weird, cold, isolating mentality that seems to come from above somewhere and it leaks through into our culture. I'm not sure where it comes from. But it feels so cold and it's not us. It's not mammals. It's not a mammalian thing to do. Our young need to be held. Our young need to be close to each other. It's kind of a reptilian thing, actually, to keep their babies at, at bay, to keep their babies in an egg over there and then walk away and never look at them again. That's reptilian. And it's almost like we're being expected to operate under that mentality. It's very, very weird. We're not lizards. We don't lay eggs in a hole and then walk away from them. We're mammals. I'm sorry, I like, I, I know if you're watching this, you're a human. Hopefully you're human. <laughs> and um, We're animals. And so if you, if you look at the apes, if you look at the other mammals, their babies are close with them. Felines, the babies are close with them. Dog families, the canines, babies are close. None of this rubbish where you keep it in a different tree, you keep it in a different cave. When it's crying, you just, you don't let, you, you, you just let it cry. What a load of bollocks. We are doing our babies and children a huge disservice. It's okay to be close to your child. It's okay to do it for as long as you're both happy with that. And especially if the child needs it, as long as that child is needing you, you give yourself to them. As long as that child needs it. When they start to express a need for independence, okay. They can go to their own room, they can close the door, sleep in their own bed at night. I feel it's got to be on their terms. Not us. When this baby comes through from our bodies and we pop it in a little cute box in a different room of the house, I feel this is criminal. I, I feel on a very base level it's a, it's one of the most harmful things we could do to them. We don't realize it, but we're creating massive insecurity. And we're creating this, this probably belief in them that no matter how hard they cry, no matter how much they, they want attention, it's not coming. They don't deserve it. They, don't, they shouldn't need it. What's wrong with them that they need it so much? Why do they want so much attention? Maybe all these people who reach adulthood, who seem like they want attention, they've got mommy issues or daddy issues, or just generally, they, you can just see they're so obviously in desperate need of attention. And it, it, it wrecks their lives, it, it influences whole life decisions and life paths and years of time. Imagine if they were secure. What would our world be like? if most humans felt secure in themselves. What would our world be like if most humans felt secure in themselves and were enough? They knew they were loved. They felt on a deep historical baby level that they were loved. And their mom and dad or their parents wanted them close. It doesn't take much, you know. Our world is in a bit of trouble and we need to change things. But something like this, this fundamental thing, how much money do we have to spend on this, this, this particular thing to rectify it? How much money do we have to spend? Nothing. It's just a choice. It's just a location of a child in that room or in this bed with us. And you're probably spending less money, right? Less money. Are you spending more time? You're probably spending more time by trying to get that child okay with staying in that far other room, trying to calm them down, trying to teach them that everything's okay. Well, then just have them in the bed with you. They'll be fine. 
goodbye to bad dreams because you're close, you're right there. When I was a kid, I used to have so many horrible dreams. And I always wanted to sleep with my parents. But I think my mom and dad at the time had this idea that children should not be in the bed with the parents. Yes, it's important that the parents, the mom and the dad, or whoever they, the parents are, have their time and their time together. That can be done in another room. Like fall asleep, have the child with you while you're falling asleep. The child will fall asleep feeling safe and secure. If you want some time together or you want some time to be intimate, you can go to the other room and do it there. Then come back and fall, fall, fall asleep again together. I think this, the close sleeping time together is something that's discounted. It's not given enough credit. That close sleeping time, that close contact sleeping time is so precious and fundamental to our mental and physical well-being. People always seem to focus on the sex thing between male and female or male and male, female and female. There seems to be this enormous focus on, oh, sex and are you intimate or are you doing it? What about intimate sleeping? Let's, let's give our kids this. It could change the world. I mean, how, how much wrong out there is happening because Somebody feels insecure about themselves. Somebody never felt loved enough. And imagine if that insecurity and in wrecking havoc on the world because of it just wasn't there because that person was enough. They felt enough. Because they were loved enough at the right points. The, they were loved enough when they were small and helpless and they needed it the most when a baby is small and defenseless that is the worst time to expect it to learn independence you love it enough you love the child enough you pour in love you give closeness later when it's a teenager okay the independence will 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 come it will come it's a natural matter, of course. Let's love our kids while we've got them. They grow up so fast. And you know what? If you don't sleep with them, you, you, you've got a time period. You have a window of opportunity, a time period where you can sleep with them and be close with them. Because once they reach their tweens, even not even teens, tweens, they're gone. They are gone tell you a funny story I happen to like ABBA and I like all the usuals like Dancing Queen and Mamma Mia and like all, all, all you know like SOS and and all, all those songs and um but the AI system on my phone for the music app has worked out that I like ABBA anyway so I, I switched one day I just wanted to try something new I switched over to um, a suggested for you like for you suggested list by the AI of songs that you know maybe you haven't heard but you would probably like so this, this uh, list starts playing through, and the third song in is an ABBA song that I've never heard for before. And the song is called Slipping Through My Fingers. And it took me down. The song is about a mother who's realizing that her daughter is slipping through her fingers. She's growing up, and she's getting further and further away from her. And she knows that there's nothing she can do. They live together. They pass each other in the, in the passageways and they share breakfast with each other. But she can feel her child getting further and further away and missing how close she used to be to her little baby child and her child as she was growing up.
it happens, it's a reality. You need to love them while they're with you. You must. It's a... See it as a privilege. And it will stay with them forever. Though they may not remember it clearly and exactly. It will stay with them forever. So freaking AI, man. Taking me down like that. The system's so freaking smart. I was I was listening 30 seconds into this song and I just broke down exactly like this. You have to love them enough. This is the highest thing you can do. The highest, most valuable, most quality thing you can do in your life. Maybe, maybe you're like, maybe you feel like you're losing time or you would rather be doing other things. There is nothing more important than loving a child enough, loving a baby enough. Nothing more important. A high paying job. If you're losing time with your kid, it's not it's not okay. Yeah. Well look at me in this state, hey. <sighs> yeah. Whew. You, you 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 can't knock AI for knowing accuracy. For knowing accurately what, what what's gonna hit you where. Whew. Mad props, mad props. Okay, yeah, so love your kids, take care of them, keep them close, sleep with them. Co sleep, do it. Co sleep, do it, do it, do it, do it. We don't even know if the next generation is gonna be the same kind of human. Do we? Or if there are going to be that many at all. <laughs> Love them. 